Water scarcity is a global challenge of epic proportions. Making sure that every community has enough safe, reliable drinking water supplies for the future is a goal that requires all the brain power of the brightest experts in the field. And today, I'm talking with one of them, Christian Sanders, an environmental engineer who's worked on water projects from California to Chile, from Trinidad and Tobago to Australia, I want to ask him about the biggest challenges and opportunities that he sees in using membranes to obtain potable water from challenging water sources. Christian, thank you for being here. Andrew, how are you going? So I guess my first question is this. Membranes and the water treatment technologies that use them, like reverse osmosis, are incredibly powerful. They can turn seawater into drinking water, remove contaminants, purify almost any source water, but tapping into this power comes with some challenges, right? So what are the major challenges that are associated with using membranes for water treatment? Well, you know, first of all, it's, it's the cost. So um, over the last, you know, 50 to 100 years, we've been relying on conventional sources of water. Um, generally um, can use gravity for a lot of those treatment processes. Um, so the cost of that water has been, you know, significantly lower than what it is now once you include membranes in, into, the, into the overall mix. Um, and the reasons for that are that once membranes are involved, you, you need a lot more pressure to drive water across those membranes. And that pressure is, uh, is energy, essentially. And that energy costs money. Um, so what, you know, really what we've seen um, is, a, is a significant increase in the cost of that water. And then obviously municipal agencies need to recoup that, that, that cost through, through rate rises. Um, the other thing with, with um, membranes, it generates a waste stream, and that waste stream needs to be disposed of. And if you're near the ocean, uh, ocean dis, uh, discharges are, are an option. If you're in an inland location, your uh, brine disposal options are, um, are constrained. And so you typically either need to evaporate it at that point, you need to convey it over long distances to the ocean, or you need to pump it into the ground. So again, increases the cost of that water. So I'd say that, that brine disposal and, and, and the energy cost are really the two biggest hurdles. Christian, one thing about your work that I find fascinating is how you and your colleagues are constantly innovating and experimenting to increase the percentage of potable water that you can obtain from a source water volume. So can you talk about that, that quest to get you know, from 85% to 90% or, or 93% to 94%? Sure. Uh, so when we talk about recovery, that is really about how high can, how much, how much water can you concentrate up before the salts in that water reach a point where they come out of solution and they precipitate on your, onto your membrane. So there's a number of sparingly soluble salts that are particularly problematic um, with, with, with reverse osmosis membranes. And when we push at recovery, what we're trying to do is find a sweet spot where we're recovering as much as we can without putting the operations at the theoretical limits where um, those salts are going to be coming out of solution and can't really be controlled with anti scalants anymore. And we always want to have some level of buffer between what is theoretically possible and where we're actually operating. And, um, and, that, is, and that is the sweet spot. So, it really depends on what feed water you're treating when you're talking about recoveries it, that that recovery value will change depending on the on the on the on the feed water source so we might be talking in the low 90s for a good quality wastewater um, or a groundwater if we're talking about seawater de desalination we're going to be talking about values that are somewhere around 40 to 45 percent recovery that is an important kind of component in the discussion and then the other part is um, is the reason we're pushing at recovery is we're trying to get the brine volumes down um, because that brine needs to be disposed of. The public policy aspect of this, you know, is, is huge, right? Because there's the technology piece of it and then there's the public acceptance. And I know one use case of, of for membranes is water reuse, you know, treating wastewater to turn it into potable water. Um, I know in places like California, where you're based, the potential of potable reuse has been held back historically by the ick factor of people thinking like, oh, this used to be wastewater, now it's drinking water. But with the current scale of water scarcity concerns, do you think that those public perceptions are starting to change? In California, they absolutely have. I mean, you know, we um, still, 
emphasize the need for public outreach, um, but for the large organizations, the large um, agencies here, especially in Southern California, um, they are 100% behind uh, potable reuse, and the state is is you know generating regulations to to guide it, and we're really no longer discussing um, you know is the public going to accept this project or not. That that's kind of a at least here in California that is now kind of in the in the rear view mirror that's fascinating so this is just a rapidly evolving field that's super compelling and you know as i said you're taking on this massive challenge of of water scarcity it's just super interesting to talk to you about all this and thank you for being here today thanks andrew that was a pleasure if you want to see more conversations with brilliant innovators like christian please do subscribe to our channel because we'll continue to have these conversations with brilliant folks around the world solving the biggest challenges in the environment and infrastructure and if you're interested in learning more about the power of reverse osmosis you know the fight against forever chemicals or pfas is another use case where we see this as really powerful technology. And one North Carolina community is using low pressure reverse osmosis to deal with emerging contaminants in their source water. And this is a project that will remove PFAS compounds to undetectable limits. And to learn more about this project, check out the link below or go to cdmsmith.com slash PFAS.